Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of Astral Stew. That didn't sound very <laughs> energetic, Hold did on, it? I got, I got. <laughs> Ooh, that's Astral Stew. Stew. <laughs> I feel like we should harmonize. Ooh, that. That's Astral. Stew. I don't know. I say that a lot. That just tastes like ass. Astral. Astral, astral Stew. Like next time we go do Point Pleasant. Uh, dome chance we need to work in a stew you know harmonization there oh uh, i was just hoping you just wanted to work in a stew i was like that could be really good when we'd be hungry after hiking but but if you're working in the stew wouldn't it ruin your laptop <laughs> and your pants that just reminds me of the bugs bunny uh, cartoon where he's like taking a bath in the big pot and like he's like chopping in carrots and stuff. The Tasmanian mm-hmm. Devil episode. Yeah. yeah. Well, more than that, but yeah. Yeah. So, how y'all been? Been all right? Good. It's been about a month. I've been fiending for this. It's been over a month. Yeah, with, it's been over a with month. All I y'all my, like playing juggling with the schedule. I uh, I had a lot going on. I had a lot of family here. My dad just left. I just had my forty second birthday. I'm very excited because the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So that the meaning of life is forty two. So I've got one year that I'll understand everything. And then it's all screwed the pooch next year. Oh, so you're telling me that this year, because I'm already 42 this year where I've been figuring stuff out, is it going to end in August when I turn 43 and you'll finally quit acting like, you know, every damn thing. I don't act like I know every damn thing. He doesn't act. Uh, Yeah. It ain't acting. (laughs) All right. So, um, you know, last couple of shows, we've had some really good topics. We talked about human flesh, uh, on your plate, um we talked about beans around mothman which i tried coming up with a little song for but i couldn't quite make work i like um, the food theme kind of going with the ass we talked too. about like, is that holy, our thing we talked about his holiness dr stephen greer that's right <laughs> that's right which which i will say uh, you know on that topic a little bit just just briefly um you know like like i was talking with you all about it i mean regardless of which side of the conversation you come down on greer or uh, uh, Elizondo, um, the fact is that they've created a conversation where all answers lead to UFOs are real. They do, but I, I will say I, I, I'm getting more and more mad at Stephen Greer's marketing. I mean, it's like the last four emails from them have literally been using Donald Trump tactics, have been like, here comes fake disclosure. Here yeah. comes fake this and fake that. And I'm like, guys, it's, we don't have, I mean, I guess Greer believes he has definitive proof and that's the issue, but it's like, we can work both sides. It's just like, we yeah. always said, why does everything have to be black and white? Right. Why can't there be good entities bad uh, entities like, well, and what, like the 60 minutes thing was monumental like it was oh yeah monumental. Gosh, thanks well, that's for the thing. telling me it was on i was like I, <laughs> watching it with my grandmother i was like oh my gosh like yeah. well, and that's why i was mad because greer immediately sent out an email after that was out saying beware of fake disclosure you know and it's like well, what really is i, I saw a lot on, of people man. the day after and even today harping on Lou Elizondo, because he was asked a direct question, are you saying UFOs are real? <laughs> and, and he said uh, the U.S. government is saying UFOs are real. And everybody's yes. harping on him for not saying, yes, I'm saying that. But I will say that I think he made the right move there, because if he says, yes, I'm saying that, then it's just Lou Elizondo saying that. And but, look, Lou's been mm-hmm. in the government and military for long enough to know how to steer a question's answer. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, come on. How many times has he been asked that? He's probably had a couple of goes of saying it the other way. Exactly. I, I believe it was a tactical Now, move the only well. issue one. that I was having with the whole uh, 60 Minutes thing with Lou was like, we're talking about whether or not aliens or UFOs were real. And I was just trying to figure out if Lou had a neck. Is that real? <laughs> I mean, like, where do you his, go to buy his, those really high collar shirts? His damn collar was like tickling his earlobes, man. <laughs> it's like harking back to the 1700s uniforms, like you know. As he, Except you know. for no, I mean they had ruffs. His is just. <laughs> hey everybody, I'm Captain Lou Albano. Wait, oh shit! That's WWF. That's <laughs> Lou, Lou Elizondo is the Mothman. Remember, Mothman had no neck; it just flowed oh. from shoulders to head. <laughs> We cracked a fucking case. We, we did. There it Just is. Go ahead there and it press is. Stop. We're done. everything. We've we've we figured it out. <laughs> 
No, for real though, Lou Elizondo, I'm sorry if you would ever want to be on this show. <laughs> I'm just joking about your, your neck, whether it's there or not. It's fine. You know, some people have long necks. I mean, it looks like I don't have a neck. I mean, that's that's okay, you know. No neck. He's got that so beard. much information he can't talk about. It pushes his head down. It pushes his head down. Yep. So he used to be taller. Um, <laughs> every time he was abducted, they stole a vertebrae. Um, but yeah, I mean, referencing that, that, that whole 60 minutes uh, thing. And I know we're kind of two weeks out from that, but yeah, that 60 minutes thing was pretty remarkable. And I'm with Santosh and, and you know, I mean, I know there's been a million uh, news stories like that over the years, but there was something different about this. one. Yeah. Just uh, well, and, and yeah. on the next day, even I said, I think I sent one of you the screenshot, but the next day on CBS news.com, uh, on the uh, late breaking news or whatever section they have, or all the latest updates, that uh, you know UFOs are real was like the second headline. Yeah, uh, and that's the difference. Most of those news stories have always been, "Is this real? Who, who, so and so saw this? Can is there life in Mars?" But like this was, it didn't say, "Are UFOs real?" That wasn't the headline of the sixty minutes piece. It was legit, just UAP. Yeah. And that was fascinating. They didn't treat any of this really with skepticism. It was like Lou said it the best. Lou said, there is no question whether or not UFOs are real. It's it's everything else that we're still yeah. looking into. Yep. Yep. So, so basically what we've been saying forever. I mean, I right. Guess, yeah, right. I mean, Everybody in the community is like, yeah, okay, we've known this forever. But them acknowledging it is something as well as the masses ingesting it is a completely different thing. And, it, and we've always said it, it like mainstream television, government. Yeah. you're going to get Joe Blow knowing exactly yeah. what's up now. Well, and, it, and it's uh, it, I mean, I think that's evident because, uh, Stefan, you know, you and our friend, uh, the theologian, um. Uh, he he in, a, in the other chat <clears throat> he uh, made reference to he and his and some of his other groups of his other religious groups or whatever that they were talking about the 60 minute segment so it is getting people outside of the community if you will talking about it so yep and i and i and i said this in in uh our wristwatch chat t- today was um i think that's where it was but it was basically like this is them testing the waters. This is exactly yeah. what it is to chest to see if the Brookings report is still accurate. Is it going to create a panic? And it has not. Yeah. Because if they would have aired this footage in the presentation that they had done 30 years ago, 40 years ago, really, people would have lost their damn minds. People would have been down in their bunkers, you know, especially during the Cold War uh, yeah. and stuff like that. So, the myth of um, War of the Worlds. That the world everybody's going to freak out and act that way. Yep. Yep. All right. So you ready to move on to my actual topic for yeah, the show? Let's start the show. Hello, okay. everybody. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did. I have something that I will preface this by saying um, my the question that I'm going to ask for the topic is is um, preloaded for me because of my upbringing in Christianity. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I've seen, or I, I continue to see from a lot of uh, people, both in the paranormal community and even outside of the paranormal community is, um, that anything that goes against like any of this stuff that we're talking about, you you know, UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, whatever the case may be, it's all demonic, Oh, I've been seeing that a lot yeah. more popping back up with all this disclosure stuff getting ready to drop. Been seeing the trolls on all the UFO boards hitting it again. So I wanted to ask the question. <sighs> um, so, again, my Christianity background really heavily lays on to demonic stuff and the devil and Satan, all that kind of stuff. I've since educated myself and understand where a lot of that comes from. And a lot of it stems from and how they stole it from different belief systems and that sort of thing. But do you all think, or do you know, are there actual negative entities in the space that really mean harm? Like, do they, do they mean in which space uh, in, you know, physical well, I know that there are negative people in the physical realm, but like, are there, I guess, negative energies in the astral realm and in, in, in some other realm that mean Basically, to without, 
without oh. putting a label on it, are there jinn? Are there demons? Are there yeah. dark forces? Right. Also, <sighs> one one before you get in, Stefan, I'm going to throw this out there: is there are some whose job it is to keep you down, to sort of keep gatekeep, and that could come across as evil mm. is if they're just the way that they approach doing their jobs. But Stefan, I would love to hear what you say because oh, I've still I... got an opinion. <laughs> Yeah, it's like we're all going to come at it from different points of view because, uh, you know, there's no... There's well, let's no... bukkake this then. <laughs> yeah. <Blah! laughs> uh, but I always think about, you know, I always think about Satan if we just go to Christian. <laughs> Do you yeah. always think about always. Satan? Always. I was listening to I, Ghost I yesterday. This. and yeah. I knew you were into um, satanic doo-wop. You got me I am, into it. I am into satanic doo-wop. It's good <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, but, you know, like I think about the uh, story in Smoke and Mirrors, uh, Neil Gaiman's book, where he talks about the Silver City. And he talks about um, the devil. Like, if we go along that lines of following the story that has been perpetuated throughout the church, not through the Bible, that Lucifer... The morning star became the devil, became Satan. Um, you know, the question that's always asked is if God creates everything and God's in control of everything, how he had to have then created evil, right? And that's something I've always stuck by. Even in my Christian days, I'm like this because in Neil Gaiman's book, he talks about um, that he created the darkness to tempt lucifer because he in his grand plan he needed this darkness to happen so that there could be a light uh you know for example you know supposedly adam and eve didn't have the light of choice they didn't understand that good and evil right that's what the whole apple was for or persimmon or whatever yeah and so um there's that aspect that god created that. so now flipping back to what i believe in energy and things like that it's like is energy bad or good? I don't think so. Can it be manipulated? Yes. Can it be changed? Okay, hold on. I, I want to jump in with mine too. That's all um, I had. It was just kind of that. Yeah, well, I was cutting off Josh because I saw him. He's about oh. to take it into another topic. And I was like, let me speak, please. So we're not even going into the fact that Samael isn't necessarily the morning star and right, all, yeah. of that, all of that nonsense. Let's just throw that out. Um, we live on a dualistic world. I do not think we live in a dualistic reality because think about it and think about our ancestors. We've got one primary star in our system, you know, and we've got one big shiny thing at night. So that duality, I think, just came from the fact that we're on this planet. I, I wonder if other civilizations like out there with binary star systems mm. have religions that mirror that as well i think that's where that's coming from and so when you have duality to have the concept of good you naturally create the concept of bad and let's just take it straight into batman and joker right like they they don't really exist without the other in a way yeah. like they drive each other forward in their narrative and so in that way i'm like yeah it exists because hell i every human has the capacity to be a demon and an angel so it is already within us and if we were made in god's image then that means there's an evil bit in him too. That's, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, so one of the things, like what made me really start thinking about this recently is um, when I do, uh, or when, you know, when we've done things, Stefan and, and I, we've, we, you know, we cast a circle and, you know, we ask for anything that has good intention, you know, that, that can come in and interact with us and so on and so forth. But when I really got to think about it, um, something that, we perceive as doing harm could still in their own right having good intention right and negative could actually be what you need so when right. you get rid of all negativity it's well, like well maybe you need a little sometimes here's a perfect example the inhumanoids right from uh woody woody <laughs> darren wooden Derenberger's uh book where he talked about the pink humanoids called i think they were called inhumanoids right yep Mm -hmm. um, and they just stole things because that's the way their society worked is that if you left it out, it was fair game for anyone to take. And so to you, including that's, people to you, <laughs> just that's negative. right? Well, to you, that may be negative because that was your thing. And our society doesn't go that way, but to them, that's culture. Yeah. That's that they, they are happy that that was left for them. What if they think of our species as a plague and they are doing the good thing by offing us or butt probing us? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Those are the only well, two choices, death or butt probe. 
Yeah, and or so uh, death by putt pro or death by well <laughs> reminds, that that reminds me of a boom watch. We did that watch. in medieval times. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I, I wasn't necessarily saying that energy is negative or positive. I was just more or less saying that could something um exist to manipulate the energy in a outright negative way. To well, I, so I, the so they don't. That- they're not doing it to do good. They're making the choice. I'm going to take this and do bad with this. Well, the reason I, I went energetically, Josh, is because when we talk about demons or things like that, we don't see them in corporeal, right? So mm. they are energetic creatures to me in, in that vein. If we're following the lines that you were talking about using the term demons to create a similar idea, that's energetic. They're not they're not sitting on my bed. Well, they've sat on beds, but for the most part, we see them as either in a different dimension or some sort of energetic being, I would assume. So that's where I went. Is energy evil? I don't know. How was, were they created? If so, then do we have intelligent design? Are we going back to that route? Or is it just our perception of them that makes right. them and evil? Then again, and this all comes back to what is evil? Yeah. And for me, like at the end of the day, I'm an optimistic nihilist, but there is no good. There is no bad. There is no right. There is no wrong. It Nothing has meaning except for the things you apply meaning to. So once you've applied meaning, then it is good or bad. But that's right. after you've applied meaning to something that inherently doesn't have it. So so like <clears throat> a really good example is if someone um, thinks of a spirit in their house, a ghost in their house as being demonic because of their upbringing, because of their current, you know, uh, li- the, it's like bugs, Josh, like everybody has a different reaction to a bug. Right. Well, and so, even then, right. Some bugs will hurt humans. Right. Mm-hmm. So are they bad? Cause they're right. protecting your home. Are all ticks Scorpions? bad or just the ones that give you Lyme disease on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, that then that uh, that does it, it, it comes down to intelligence, you know. It, it, Ooh, got to be smart enough to be evil. Otherwise, but even then, <laughs> I mean, what is? I mean, I hate to be super philosophical, yeah. but what what is evil? I yeah. mean, it's like it's our perception of what it's is evil. It's our perception. Like. Why do we assume everything else exists that way? A demon, if it's alive, if it's a creature, if, let's say it's an an extraterrestrial from so it's just how it lives. Like it is, there is no intention there. It's just, uh, you know, yeah. We're like, Oh, well it's killing people for no good reason. And maybe that's what it's doing. But to them, maybe that's what its purpose is. No, it doesn't even have to be purpose. It's just, eh, I don't know. Like we step on bugs. Yeah. Are tigers bad because they kill? Yeah. A lot. (laughs) Carol, Carol Baskin's a bitch though. Wait, wait, wait. Hippos are the number one killer in Africa and nobody thinks hippos are evil. Except for the victim's family. Because they're cute. It's stupid. <laughs> they're the number one killer. They're so aggro. They are. They're crazy. Somebody, what did somebody call them? Murder horses or African. Yes. Somebody called them African murder horses mm. the other day. That's, I was that dying. That is exactly it. That is exactly like it. African murder horses. <laughs> so, not, so that's not what a zebra is called then? Because that's. Mm-mm. Okay. No. <laughs> but uh, fruit, their whole thing's stripes. defense. They're fruit stripes. They could clippity cloppy to death, I guess. But but I mean, I don't know. I just don't think of a as a hippopotamus as being related to a horse. Oh God! I just there's this fantastic podcast. I wish I could quote so people could listen to it. But it had something to do with with a zebra and it hurting people. Oh my God! Oh sorry. Can't I don't know. It. But I you, to go back to God. That's the question. Is God evil? Right. <laughs> zebra that, going back like, to God. These are the things we ask people like what's a black with white stripes. Stuff. That's the thing we ask theolo- the theologian and other Christian friends and things like yeah. that. Is God evil? Right. Well, he has to be right. Well, is he just pure good? Because I mean, he murdered a lot of people during yeah. Old Testament times. If that's legit. <laughs> like, but then they say, oh, well, you know, he's, you know, that he, well, I guess he just looks at us like bugs. Well, then is he someone we want to look at? Right. I mean, so there's all these questions. Yeah. I mean, if you're going back is if there is a singular God, is God good or evil, or is he a mixture of both, or is he none, or is she none? Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's so much about intention and intelligence. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think it also, and I uh, mean no disrespect to anybody out there, but I think it also has to do with 
a, a lot to do with control and manipulation of the populace. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, look at the totally. history of Christianity. Yeah. That's you know, that's that. religion in most. Right. Yes. Yeah, not just Christianity. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, I mean, if if um, if just, you know, the world is going to hell around you um, and and there's this guiding light that you can run to and, um, you know, will protect you and so on and so forth. And, and he has no, you know, evil and he's pure and blah, 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 blah. It's just it helps get people into church and it helps them to stop doing whatever they're doing and blah, 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 blah. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, I think that, and I'm, uh, we're probably getting outside of a Astro Stew episode here, but, um, you know, I, I, I have said we before have parameters, no, we don't have parameters. Okay, cool. Like we have, we've set no walls upon us. Yeah. We talked about we're eating human flesh. Stew, yeah. Right. Right. right? So, we glue, uh, we glop, but I, you know, to kind of take this a little sideways, but still in, in line, I think that there was a time for us as a people, as a race of people where we needed religion um, to help with those kind of controls and things like that. But I question if we really need religion anymore, not to say we don't need spirituality. I'm like going to stop you and say, different. why, why do you think that we needed religion? Because not every culture had religion. So, well, I'd, I think that somebody thought we needed religion in order to mature us into the society then, we are then today. Let me re-ask and say, what is your definition of religion then? Um, are you saying a God that at one point we needed a God or gods? No, I think that, he's more saying that we needed a set of rules to yeah. make people be good. Right. right. And right. that's why that's what so we're not inherently at. good without this fear, this this fear right. of hell and reward of heaven. And that's what I was getting at. was like, is it that because religion's a, another bag of tricks? Religion is is used to enforce that. But so is school. So is education. So my question is there is what is your definition of religion? But, but which came well, because first? I say because I don't think it's religion. I think it's just what Santosh said. I said at some point we as a people needed a set of rules to follow to create a community, but to make it thrive. But we needed a way to enforce those rules. Well, also and, what, what we're go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say so we needed a way to enforce those rules to make them want to be followed to make them self-govern themselves um but also think about what like would it be anthropology like thinking about it from that aspect when we needed it if we needed it it was when we were coming together and merging tribes right Right. when you're creating these because our species has found that we we do well in groups you yeah. know, we can't always handle too many of ourselves. And then that's the difference of country living and city living right there. Right. What rules you need to keep people upholding the status quo decided right. by whom? Yeah, that's what I, 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 it, it, I mean. It was just like, it, I think shit just happened. I mean, it's like because a lot of the very early religions, especially look at some of the Native American religions and, and uh, Asian religions and stuff like that. It was there's a big giant ball of fire in the sky. And we've noticed on accident that if we don't cut somebody's head off at 5 p.m., <laughs> that a fire accidentally happens or a solar eclipse that they didn't know what it was. And gods got created based off of things they yeah. were afraid of or didn't understand. And that was a way for their minds to wrap their heads around it at the time for the lack of education. But then, yes, there were many cultures that said, hey, we need to have a set of rules to make this community work and people aren't listening. Well, let's tell them that the ball, great ball in the sky is going to kill them because that's what we believe. I, I don't, I don't sky think daddy it, is watching us all sky daddy's. And I'll be honest. I don't think that they were like, let's have a meeting. Let's go ahead and say that it's the sky God. I think that there was probably some charismatic person was like, no guys, I've paid attention. And I noticed that that tree got hit by lightning after John murdered Maria. And so maybe this isn't a good thing, John right? Murdered Maria. He did. Yeah. John, John two, two cones. 
Is that is and, that going to uh, be on the next episode of uh, Ghosts in the Attic, Bodies in the Basement? They're going to talk is. about true it crime. Is. It's one of the very first true crimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I mean, that's my point. It's like, you know, yeah. I think these things, I think, uh, I'll be honest with you, I think early religion happened on accident or just out of fear. So my, my point that I was but trying to not make. Not the original form of the Illuminati exercising. <laughs> no, no, not the okay. Illuminati. Okay. And not like what a church becomes after hundreds of years yeah. of being in power. So, uh, so my point in making all of that statement, not that us is not a good conversation, but is that we don't need any of that stuff anymore. I think we should move past and just do you do you, looking at looking at the voting trend over the past couple of years. Are you sure we don't need some sort of some? I'm not saying we don't need rules, but do we do we do? do I mean, do, commit to the anarchy, Josh. Do thousands of people need to go into uh, a stone building and listen to one person tell them how to live their lives? Okay, or so, so wait, isn't I, that, so are you talking about school or church? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, I, I am definitely, I don't know. I have to say that that is a very narrow atheistic view, to be honest, because we we don't I'm just know. gonna sip my tea. We don't have proof. We don't have these things. And sometimes, if that's what works for people, that's what works for people. I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. I like I I don't like. I, I am not a Christian anymore. But let me tell you, when it was in my life, it was needed, and it really helped me through some stuff. Being a Buddhist has really helped me in more ways than I could ever believe. Um, you know, like uh, paganism, all of those things, those have been very important to me. And um, I don't know who I would be had I didn't have something there. You know, I'd like to think that, yes, there'd just be a fun group of people that just did things for the sake of being good, kind of like the Unitarians do, but even their religion. So... Well, I'm kind I, of on your side, Josh. No, I don't think we do. Primarily because of things like Pastafarianism and Scientology, we can make up our own religions now to suit ourselves. And so, well, and I and I guess I'm where I'm going with this is there's there seem to be just a lot. Like I look back at in history and a lot of the the problems with the with like the world and the you know the whole elitism and all of that kind of stuff and how much of that stems from you know religious undertones 100 like, uh, that's your trauma talking though but trauma we all share right <laughs> like the church trauma we still live with and and i mean yes a lot of wars were fought over gods yes yes over ideas <laughs> we or kill ideas. each other over ideas. well i mean how, but that's you know, what i'm saying i think if there wasn't religion it'd just be something else just like santos was kind of saying okay so it'd just be instead of christianity would be bobadanity or whatever or John and Anity or no, I'm not even John saying that. I'm not even saying religion. I could just be saying how to make fucking spaghetti. That there's two countries that fight over making spaghetti. I mean, it could be anything. Uh, the star bellied sneeches taught us all. Yes. Differences. I mean, it doesn't even have to be religious skin color. Just yeah. where you're from. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I now live in Arizona, but I get called hillbilly country boy all the time. And I'm like, well, I'm from Ohio originally, <laughs> but apparently my accent comes out whenever I'm on the phones, my Kentucky accent, <laughs> especially if anybody from the South answers the phone. <laughs> I'm like, well, hey! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Howdy. we, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just, so, so to just kind of wrap this, kind of wrap it all back around. Um, I think that a lot of people who, classify a lot of these things that they don't understand or are uh, unwilling to try to understand as as demons are also the same people who look down at certain races of people within our world and and other folks and 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 think that somehow they're they're better than them or they're better than certain societal you know uh, differences or did, poor did people just, or whatever did what? you just link a belief in demons to racism? I mean, bravo, sir. I think that's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> bravo, sir. If you if you believe in demons, you're a racist. That is that's no. not that is not what I said. I said this. So said what this. he said was, is if you're a racist, you believe in demons. Yes, right. 
I think and then it's, what about my, racist demons? My point is, is that the same <laughs> ignorance that's pervasive in all of those groups seems to be the same ignorance that's pervasive and just labeling anything that they don't understand. It's of the paranormal sort as a demon. Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, like I said, it's all fear. It's all fear because people are scared mm-hmm. and sometimes people don't have a higher purpose and they don't know how to find it, what to do. Um, I mean, we all have friends like that. We all have, you know, family members like that, that never knew who they were, what they wanted to be or what they do. And they found religion or, you know, how some, men and women have babies because they're trying to look for a purpose and they think having a kid's going to be that purpose, mm-hmm. you know, well, sometimes religion gives them that purpose. Um, and if there was no religion, yeah. In a perfect world, I would love that we all just figured out how to do things right. And this, that, and this, that, but who knows, who knows that without being afraid of something bigger, would we have evolved into a species that did look at murder as wrong did look at hurting others as wrong i mean i mean shit just look fucking 100 years ago i mean we were still like segregating black people making them go to a different water fountain and shit like that that's that's like less than 100 years ago i mean hell that was in the 60s it was still happening i know so, but i mean and, look where we are now right and look but at it, the underlying of that sure but look where we are now because we had all of that teaching right and if it is, if it did come from religion like you're saying like if it all came from religion would it have come if they didn't have religion like where we are now where we've evolved to now and i mostly mean the three of us because we have a generally good understanding i think of of people and equality and stuff also, what kind of demons are we talking about? We very much jumped in with like the Christian lumping yeah. of the word, and I'm like, hold on, there's different types and from different regions that do different things. There, yeah. what, which ones are you talking about or, in general? But I know or, you're just lumping them like I would this just, group of people we've made up that are obviously ignorant, racist, and evil. <laughs> um, like, like, but what is evil? I don't really like that we've we've made a bubble of people like that. But what is what? Or demons. I was just joking. Demons. Well, and, and, yeah, and, I mean, well, the con- ones you conjure up to work with. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. So the, I think the underlying question behind my question was, are there? And I'm, I'm we've already had a lot of this discussion, so I don't know how to re reword the <laughs> the question. Um, but are there things? that in their understanding of what is good or bad in intend to do bad i don't think that needs to be i I think that's over quantification Mm -hmm. the essential question was are there evil things out there that actually are evil like right that's what you're you're getting to it's not you were specifically saying non-human entities correct Okay, so non-humanoid and feature and everything as well, which yeah. is also probably why we're being soft-fed all this bullshit before um, disclosure and then contact because we we are so biased towards our own shape and our own preferences of what's pleasing. I mean, hell, you all spent how long making fun of no neck? Um, we we all do it. <laughs> we yeah. all do it. You know, like aesthetically, I hope they're aesthetically pleasing. I had always imagined well, them. To be, and what, what if, if they are? Not? Yeah. What, what if, if they're, they're a not? valiant? What if they're a valiant Thor? What if they're an injured cold and they look exactly like us? But then what if they don't, right? What if they look what if like they're yeah. nose upside down? Ooh, and what if they look like a pile of vomit and has a hundred different eyeballs? A hundred different eyeballs. Jeez, oh my God. Are you making fun of me for the one that I shared about that? No, no Stefan dream. saw that. In, in a, my, vi- in a in my, one of my visions that I had was the pile of vomit with a at the CE eyes. five. Oh yeah, thing yeah. I told you about like the pizza, the hut with a thousand eyes that I yeah. saw. Right? Yeah. Okay. I was like, are you making- that? See, I had the baby version. You had the grown up adult version. No, you just <laughs> Stefan. Yours was uh, sleeping, and yeah. Santosh's was sitting up, like Odo in his bucket. <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor Odo. <laughs> he just wanted Kira so bad. Yeah, he did. <laughs> want to care so bad so anyways um any i think we're we're we've about beat this horse to death any any closing thoughts do you want to ask the question a different way yeah um, (laughs) do you um do you think that um we still didn't uh, answer if evil for evil's sake is out there did we no do you think (laughs) twinkies would still be good if the cream was on the outside well yes 
that, but then it's a fucking cake <laughs> <laughs> with whipped ice. Twinkie, eek, twink. <laughs> eek, twink. Um, but I will say, do I think that there are like legit without trying to think heavily about it? Yeah, I think there are fucking things out there that want to harm us and do things. I was at the Whispers Estate, had my 40th birthday there, and got scratches on my neck. I mean. I, from my point of view, I have to look at it that way because it hurt me, right? So, yeah, are there things that, I, yeah, I mean, we've all read stories. I mean, if all these hauntings and the like and things like that, if that shit's real, the Smurl hauntings, I mean, you yeah. know the crazy stuff that happened. If that's mm. legit, there's evil things. Well, and we've discussed this before population sample and because we're again using humans human bias that's what we've got to do take any population sample it's going to be rare that you get a truly evil person but if you do enough or you happen on the right one you're going to find like uh, the gacy in the group right yes, so you yes. mean to tell me that everything other than us is is enlightened and we're yeah. the only ones with these bad tendencies? well and then yeah then you start getting into that whole idea once you start getting into the serial killers and stuff like that it's like Where's the fine line between insanity and sanity when it comes to killing someone? Mm, yeah, I could talk you about know? some yoga. Are they crazy? And if they're crazy or if they're insane, are they evil? Well, or if is it a life, if life is an illusion, if this is all a game and the point is to get out of it, aren't they mm -hmm. helping you by murdering you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you can, we could really get deep down some <laughs> rabbit holes, some shit I think about, man. I listen to so much true crime, and that's always the thing that I think about all the time is you know, are, uh, what is evil? Are they, you know, it, even then if it's nature versus nurture, I mean, it's all these questions. I could have made this, this reference. You would have loved me, Stefan, but I need wolf room and heart. That's it. Thank you wolf, for putting wolf, it in my hand. I don't believe there. I, yeah. I don't believe there's a wolf room and heart, a great corporation of evil out there, you know, like discussing how to undo everything. Yeah. There's no Skeletor that. and his friends, like. but there's also circumstantial evil right like somebody that was born imbalanced and abused all their life and then turns out to kill people that's circumstantial evil yeah were they always evil or were they just made more evil by their circumstances so right? if if that person let's, let's let's carry that through and just I, and i don't have the answer but if that person when that person dies and their energy is released back into the cosmos is their energy clean or do they carry the stain of their previous life I don't, I think energy is neither good nor evil. So, yeah, well, it's like yogically. I mean, if you, if you go down the reincarnation path, there's some karma that you'll want to work off, you know, eventually. But yeah, I don't know. That's, and that's a lot of stuff. That is interesting. Comes up in comic books a lot. Like, you know, like for example, Superboy, not, not Kal El, but, you know, Con El, the one that came after Superman died, he was, uh, uh, clone of Lex Luthor and Superman he was bred essentially as an assassin to kill Superman right and then he spends his time fighting against that and dating the boy wonder and they, yes no um fighting against that and that's that same thing you'll see this in horror movies sometimes the son of Satan you know and fighting against having to be Satan's son and supernatural. They discuss yeah. that. Oh, <gasps> Hellboy. Hellboy. What, what, what about the Gnostic belief that the God everybody worships is actually the devil. So is then the devil. Jesus, yeah. Like, like Jesus was the light. Well, the, yeah. Inky and then Leo is essentially what that Gnostic yeah. view is. Yeah. Fighting the wrongs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this went a whole lot of weird ways, but I'm glad we had the conversation. Um, glad you feel better about evil. I don't know that I feel any different one way or the other, but I'm glad I just we know I'm excited about season two of evil. Um, <gasps> I am too. I'm so glad you like that. Wait. I can't wait. I just saw a thing about it. So I know it's going to be popping soon. So, so what's that evil? Yeah. Evil. Mm -hmm. It's a, just a great detective type story, but it, they deal with like supernatural evil things. And they church. ride that line of making it excusable. So yeah, you have to kind good. of decide. <laughs> it's mm. good man i highly recommend it only one season so far but it's good all right so uh thank you everybody for tuning in for astral stew thanks for listening uh, long. <laughs> yep um if if anything that we've said here you disagree with i apologize please leave a comment below yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um like, subscribe leave a comment yeah <laughs> Um, no, I, I really would like to understand though people's viewpoints and opinions on some of the stuff that we talk about. So I always welcome anybody. Well, to comment yeah, below. I mean, we 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 do not claim to be the experts on any of this stuff because 
it's all it's all point of view it's all conjecture mm-hmm. at the end of the day so yep. we'd love to hear other people's things and stuff like that um and i just wanted to remind people to join wristwatch which is our patreon uh through fearscape there um we discuss not only uh the mystery that we're all working on together right now but there's stuff like this that we talk about and it's it's a great place to kind of just talk about these things and drop questions and see what yep. everybody thinks so yep <clears throat> and uh easiest way to find that is to go to fearscapepodcast.com slash support and uh, click on Patreon, or you can go to our store, pick up one of our spectacular T-shirts. So, more T-shirts coming. <laughs> Jersey Devil coming soon. <laughs> Ideas they are a brewing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good. That's a good look for that's you. What I'm trying to do. The Jersey Devil. Trying to do the, Did the you pose? Face? Did you pose for for you Santa? For it, <laughs> right? Jersey Doesn't it look like Devil! that? It does. It looks exactly <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> i swear you posed I just, you know, you're amused is what it is so mm-hmm. yeah i am amused amusing so um, <laughs> all right so thanks again everybody and uh later <laughs>